Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome to Sugar's Worlds. I am Sugar, if you didn't already know, and I have fallen from above to help you look and feel like a superstar. And I know that's corny and annoying, but actually there is a superstar hiding deep down inside of you. And I'm gonna pull it out. We're gonna reel her out. It's gonna take a lot, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna hold on tight. We're on the Sugar Magic School Bus. So let's get into it with this glue. <laughs> let's start gluing down these brows because Miss Sugar, she has a lot to say today. I mean, when do I not have a lot to say? But I feel empowered to speak. I've had an amazing morning. And while I glue down these brows, let's get into my thoughts from my morning walk. Good morning. It is a beautiful day here in sunny Los Angeles, California. I wanted to talk to you about how to become a member of Sugar's World. It's very easy, but I have four steps. So step number one is you have to hot girl walk. Now, hot girl walking, it's a verb, it's a lifestyle. If you don't know how to do it, that's basically the whole point of this membership. It's, it's about the hot girl walk. It's all centered around this, you know. This is the heart of what we are doing here. So step number two is we curate our own dream life soundtrack. So this is making your favorite music playlist. Now this playlist is the foundation of the meditation that is basically the hot girl walk. So we need to be really specific and really intentional about the songs we are selecting for this playlist. So no negative self-talk. This has to be positive, self-empowering music. I will link my Sugar's World playlist below. This is the starter pack. I kind of put together a list of songs that I think will really help you and get your day going or the end of your day. So that's also really important. You have to decide what time of day you want to hot girl walk because this is a meditation from start to finish. So that brings us to step number three is we grocery shop. I am actually on my way to Trader Joe's. So grocery shopping can be replaced with running errands. You know, it's really fun to say running errands. Switching the arm because I'm a weak person. What can I say? I don't really even go to the gym anymore. So this is my workout holding up my phone like a crazy person, but I'm not crazy. I'm just real. No, just cringy. No, just me, just sugar. <laughs> Think of the grocery shop portion of the membership as what your hot girl walk is being centered around. Because when you walk somewhere, it's good to have an intention of where you're going. You can, you know, you have your pee break like me, I go on a Trader Joe's and pee, or, you know, sometimes Target is my intention and I'm gonna go there. Or it could be a friend's house or whatever it is, a random bush that you normally pee in. But definitely have a place where you're stopping to collect yourself. This is you time, this is for you. So the grocery shopping is good because you're getting something done. You know, you still get to walk. You know, and if you drive every day, skip out on driving for once. Try walking to the store, see, and it's gonna be great natural exercise. It gets your mind going, it gets your body, like, functioning, moving. So if you're having your coffee, I mean, yeah, sometimes it could be centered around having your Starbucks. So that's a fun thing for me. Sometimes I'll just go and get the coffee. And you know, it helps because it gets the, everything loose, you know? So it's great, a good wake me up. Step number four is to rest and then repeat. So my days recently literally just consist of the hot girl walk. And you know, sometimes I'll do multiple hot girl walks throughout the day and I would just walk all day. I guess I'll get into this later in the video because I'm gonna be getting into drag today. I think my heart really starts to open when I do my makeup for some reason, so. We'll check in there. If a man can turn himself into a pretty woman, so can you. And do I agree with this? I mean, kinda, yeah. I am proof of that. I really do believe beauty is a choice. Oh, oh my god. I am so in the zone. I need to... I'm in the zone. I need to put on my blur. Hold one. But you know what? This is good. You see the mistakes all the time that I put it there. Whatever, it's all gonna blend in, but I live for the Patrick Star Secure the Blur. Right on those pores, baby. 
So yes, beauty is definitely a choice. I think it is curated. It, it is also in the eye of the beholder. I mean, you know, life is all about perspective. We all have different perspectives. And I believe if I was in someone else's shoes, if I was in their perspective, whatever someone deems beautiful or they see something as aspirational, that's their own perspective. It doesn't make mine wrong. It doesn't make yours wrong or right it's just we have different perspective and that's amazing and i definitely want to open up that conversation in the comments like i'm saying drag queen perfection but it's really just glamour perfection in general i mean aspirational beauty it's unattainable for a reason you know it, it's goals it's the mood board i'm just all about being honest and real with yourself. It's not really good to delude yourself into happiness because it's just not going to happen. You can sit here all day and try to convince yourself that you're happy about your weight or you're happy about your skin issues. But until you actually solve the problem, you're not really getting rid of the insecurity and you probably don't even realize you are subconsciously going around projecting all of your insecurities onto everyone. You are literally a walking insecurity. So Let's be real for ourselves. Like, if we have a problem, we can fix it. It is 2020. I was going to say 2020. I was literally just thinking of the pandemic. God bless my soul. But it's going to be 2024. So let's, like, actually be proactive about our lives and be in control. We don't want to live by default. And we especially don't want to live by default when it comes to our appearance, our beauty. Because let's be real. Beauty is a currency in our society so if we can take care of that then i think we're doing a good job in life things are so unpredictable and you don't know like what's gonna happen tomorrow so at least be in control of your beauty right like we don't want this to be a fluke like we want this to be intentional like you want to wake up every morning knowing yes i'm gorgeous yes i'm sickening because if you don't if you feel like your beauty is bypassing with the wind, then you're never gonna feel secure. You're never gonna feel out of balance. And you're always gonna be coming from a scarcity mindset. It's kind of like that theory of you take photos Saturday night and then Monday morning you're looking back and you're like, oh my God, why don't I look like that anymore? Like I used to be so pretty. And your friend is like, girl, that is you. That was literally you less than 48 hours ago. Like stop, like you just had some makeup on and you're not aware of how you, I don't know. So, you know, let, let's take responsibility. Let's take some ownership. Uh, Miss Spicy Cans is helping me style this wig. The boy hair, sorry. The boy hair is showing. But the but... wig needed to be sacked. Sugar doesn't like doing the sack. Ray, she likes to tease. And I'm like, no, we need a sack. Because look, this is what it would be giving. Imagine it not sacked. That's the flattest, yeah. saddest thing. Well, no, you can. <laughs> it looks so sad. Oh, with God. That we need the wig. I'm up. trying not to get you. We need the wig on top. No, I can mute it. Oh, hi. Ding. Oh, I'm just so used to always being like, oh, I don't want to be on camera. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. I love a pushback. So yeah. girls, look. So it's really good when it's pushed back off your face here, especially if you're a man, if because yeah. right now- I mean, it could be cute if you do a little side part slip, but it's like, that's cute. Well, no, this is balanced. It looks crazy, right? Because I should really have this all. This is my natural I'm hers. But when this is pushed back, it opens up your forehead and it balances out the jaw. Well, look at the, like, the hair literally proportionizes the jaw. There's more hair here. Well, yeah. So now the jaw's going to So this is literally the same exact wig, but it just Me like too. tucked under and then we're going to pin her in. Yeah. That sugar's iconic line, pin that girly in. We're just going to pin that girly in. Wow, that rhymed. Pin her in. Really loving this color. My girl, she slayed it. But actually a middle part wig but I just slide them over. But also, if you want to do, I have another idea though, if you want to keep on the side part though, if you wanted to like, the, where the hair's all coming here, oh. we can add some braids in and pull it apart. Oh, well this you know is I mean? very me. Oh, we did middle part. No, this well, is- Well, I'm always doing middle just, part. This, this looks similar to what you No, this is for my bell. I have a bell look coming up. See, I'm always thinking about the looks ahead because I want to still get versatility with, at least in the realm of my current five or six you looks. You like to have fun with them. You like to have fun with them. I'm actually going to be doing brown eyes. Did you know that? I'm doing the brown circle lenses. I, I just want to look really different for once. No, oh, but I want to give Ashley Tisdale tease. Like once you see my outfit. Get, no, no. We'll brown see. Eye. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> we're, we're fighting. Can we get into how clean the drag room is looking? I have my cleaning girl come over and help me. I still got to organize all of these wigs. I can't. We're going to do a full house tour coming soon. But this is the newest edition. I love this. I have my clothes laid out. This artwork just makes me so happy. Like, wow, that was a cultural moment. <laughs> now I'm feeling nostalgic. These are some Polaroids from the Chrissy music video shoot. Me and Spicy Kins. Oh, we were going through a lot this era. I'm happy we made it out on the other side. Look at the little girlies. Oh, 
and Chrissy and us in the middle. So cute. Look how cool these aqua eye contacts look. I'm obsessed. They're from my IBB. I don't even like to show things because then people are like, oh my God, they're sponsored. But no, I literally just want to help you out. So just the aqua shade. I love typing in enlarge going in on that category that's what it's called and i just love a bigger eye because it just makes you look so doll like and you know that's kind of the whole thing talking about unattainable beauty i mean look at tyra banks like in the 2000s on antm she well she has always been the epitome of what it is to be a beautiful woman or just beautiful person in society i mean i grew up watching Tyra and just being obsessed with her talk show and America's Next Top Model. And my biggest takeaway from Tyra is that perfection is boring. So you don't want to be perfect, but you want to be glam. So to me, Tyra is drag queen perfection. I mean, let's face it, she's literally a drag queen, but in the best way possible. If I was to call someone a drag queen, that's a compliment. Okay, it's not an insult anymore. It's not what it used to be. But I think it's really important to set visual representations of what aspirational beauty is to you. So you have a goal or someone to aspire to when it comes to your beauty. And ultimately, by you visualizing it, then you'll be able to know how it feels and like the way it sits in your body when you are viewing this said aspirational person if you will so i think a great example and i know a lot of people would find this problematic or not you know understand but to me the 90s supermodels are the definition of aspirational beauty now one could say oh but you know that's what ushered in this thin uh mentality you know kate moss was just so petite and you know, that, that was the look, the straight up and down, no curves, no swerves, just super skinny. And I see it way beyond that. I feel like that's just what the media kind of took from their skinniness. I mean, really what I'm talking about is the early 90s with Naomi, Christy, Linda. You know, these girls, they really worked for their beauty. They put the time and effort to be sickening, basically, you know? Like, they were like, we're models, so we're gonna treat this like we're athletes. This is part of the job description. So I like the aspect of them having a goal, you know, aesthetically, and how they want to appear. And then them achieving that goal, I think, is amazing. It's very similar to the Victoria's Secret models. I think they're very aspirational. You know, and then I asked myself, what is aspiration to me what is something that's aspirational and i think it's a rarity in society you know that's why those supermodels you know garnered all that attention every year because it was the controversy of our, their bodies let's be real that's why they were getting all the views all the men across the middle america were like oh look at these models in lingerie and then women kind of had to deal with you know oh my god why do i not look like that and so it really was a mess and you know that's why it was controversial, but that's TV. That's why I'm talking about it right now. You don't always see a tall, gorgeous Giselle walking down the street. You know, the, the average height for a woman, I'm sure is like 5'3 or 5'5. Five five. So it's definitely a rarity, but that's actually proof that we all ourselves are already aspirational. I mean, we're rare simply because we exist. So we need to find what is aspirational about us and then pull that out because it kind of takes a minute to find. Going in with my tried and true MAC full coverage foundation. Y'all know this is my staple. I'm trying out some other foundations right now, so I'll get back to you. And if it's sugar approved, you'll be the first to know. But there were literally clips of the contestants on ANTM talking about, oh my God, Tyra's beauty. She's unreal. She's like an alien. Like what? Like how does she look like that? And you know, when I was younger, I was like, how does she look like that? And now knowing the drag queen secrets, the beauty trading secrets that no one talks about it's like oh yeah i know how she looks like that she had a glam team of about five people and someone looking over every little thing to make sure there wasn't one hair out of place they're crossing all the t's dotting all the i's and that's what we need to be for ourselves we don't have the money we don't have the full glam squad at our service we need to make glamour from nothing but y'all need to trust me that you don't need money you don't need to already be naturally beautiful because i'm literally painting on new features with makeup it's about rocking what you got one of my iconic girlfriends in high school gianna McHugh, shout out she told me one day i was like how do you have so much confidence and she was like baby you just gotta rock what you got 
And that stuck with me, like rock what you got because that's all you got, so rock it. Just restocked that Ulta on the Tarte Shape Tape because it's my tried and true. If I can open her up, ooh. I try other concealers, but I always go back to her because you really just don't need a lot of product. And I feel like to get the coverage I want, I have to use so much product with other concealers, but then it just ends up getting so cakey because you're, you're, it's just, it's, it's an L. Something you have to keep in mind when you are on the quest for beauty. I mean, for me, I find it as a challenge. I love it because, you know, I feel like female illusion, it's an art form. It's like, how different can I make myself look? How can I really transform myself? And, you know, I pride myself on really studying just features. I, I mean, really, I, I think I'd be a great plastic surgeon or, you know, even be good aesthetically when it comes to people kind of figuring out like their aesthetic goals, not like through filler, but I think through like actually like breaking people's noses and stuff like I would actually enjoy that because it's just like it's makeup, you know, like right now I am feminizing the face. I Ultimately, mean anyone that takes care of themselves and is investing in their outward appearance, which is in turn investing in their inner psyche and inner being. And then your mental health is thriving because your physical health is thriving. That's someone that is aspirational to me. I want you to create a mood board, whether it's on your Instagram save folders or your TikTok save. Like literally, I will make collections of... A uh, divine feminine inspo or a boy style. Really kind of organize your vision board, your aspirations, so then you can look at it and it's a good reminder of, oh wow, like I would love to be that and that's what I am because I want to be that. Simply having the want means that it exists for you. Like you wouldn't have the wherewithal to have that thought of, oh wow, I want to look like this person if it wasn't a possibility. And ultimately, what you'll find is in the quest of trying to look like someone else, you realize, wait, I don't even want to look like that person. I want to look like me. You know, that's kind of the whole craze with plastic surgery. You know, years ago with the rise of lip filler and everyone ending up just looking like a Kardashian, it's like, okay, we need some originality here. Like, where, why is everyone morphing into the same person? So, you know, as much as something swings to one side when it comes to beauty standards, it swings back. It's so bizarre how even women's bodies are trends. I mean, interesting how men's bodies really are never a trend. It's always just like, oh, wow, we accept everyone's body. Well, it's different. I think hmm, there's not really trends for men, I would say. I think it's just kind of like a standard. In the gay community, it is definitely a standard of thin and white and muscular, you know, like that's a given and it's really sad. I think the only way it will stop is if the world ends, basically. It's just like, it's so sad, but the least I can do is bring attention to that issue. It's like, I can't even go in these spaces really because it just feels like, hmm. So you have to remember that the getting ready process is vital to how the rest of your night or event or wherever you're going or whatever you have to do is gonna go. Because if you look good, you feel good, and then you make others feel good around you in return. I mean, that's why, like, if I'm not feeling my best, if I'm not feeling insecure, like, I, I stay home. Like, even if it's something I was like, ugh, like, I feel blood, blah, blah, blah. Like, if, like, a lot of times it's just, like, me being dramatic. It's like, girl, just go out and have fun. And, like, who cares? Like, if your insecurities are crippling and, like, you're, you have some anxiety like me and you have your cough... Girl, if you don't feel good about yourself, do not go out because there's nothing worse than the one bitch in the corner that's complaining the whole time. And like, you know, you can just feel almost the desperation coming off of them because they're subconsciously and consciously, honestly, at this point, they it's either just a lack of self-awareness or who knows. But it's like everything they do and say is just... Uh, pick me, pick me, uh, tell me I'm pretty. Da, da, da. It's like no one wants to be around that. How am I going to find you beautiful if you don't find yourself beautiful? Like, really? Like, okay, I'm not even going to bother. Then you don't buy it. You need to find that inner self-confidence. I mean, that's definitely what I want to really talk about and get into in some other videos because, you know, you can make yourself the prettiest person. You know, you can follow the tutorials. You can, you can do it all. You can spend so much money. But if you don't actually believe you're beautiful on the inside, baby girl, you have a, just like I was saying before, you have a 
long road ahead because no one will find you beautiful. You know, is, is that the goal, right? Like you, you want to finally be viewed as beautiful by someone, but they're not going to even see your outward beauty because the inside is going to be like, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm a fraud, I'm this. It's like, no, our beauty isn't a fluke. It's not, oh, some days I look, no, we look good every day because we feel good. Y'all are going to be annoyed. You're going to be annoyed. See, it's not everyone. It's you. This is, this is solo. We're together right now. You know, I, I'm not, I need to stop addressing you as a group because it's rude. <laughs> There's seriously nothing more satisfying than doing eyebrows for me. It's just like, wow. And then like slowly this one is going to be matching up to this one. And I think eyebrows are truly the most feminizing features on someone's face. Well, not feminizing, really just transformative. It can be masculine. Brows can be masculine or feminine or hard or soft or however you want to call them. And, you know, that's another step to Miss Sugar's guide here is that you can't go off of what works for someone else. And that's kind of the issue with social media is there's so many people giving different advice. So you have to take it with a grain of salt because you have to see what works for your features and your face shape. Because what works for Alex Earl, Little Miss Blonde Buttercup, not a flaw in sight, isn't going to work for me because I have harder features technically. So, you know, as much as I want to just dab on a little burnt orange eyeshadow and mascara and call it a day, I would look like Cooper. And, you know, we got to be looking like sugar. So there's certain liberties that I can't skip that she could. So, you know, that's another thing about being real with yourself and being self-aware and being like... Do I just want to apply a little bit of mascara? Yes. Doesn't everyone to look beautiful? But some of us, we need more steps. And that's fine because we love makeup here. So bring on all the steps. I always say, if you want to look good glammed up, you have to look good out of it. You could spend all day dolling yourself up, putting yourself in the most expensive clothes, wearing the most expensive makeup. But if you actually aren't taking care of yourself, it will read. No amount of makeup is going to cover the texture of your skin. And yes, you can filter the house down, but we can see that. We can tell when something's filtered. And then in per it's like, what's the point? Because then in person, it's like, oh, your skin's not good. So what's the point of temporarily catfishing someone? It just, no. So get your skin together. Hot girly pops know this. Like we know like, oh, we have an event on Friday. Monday, okay, we're gonna be taking care of ourselves. Like we're, we're doing the face mask, we're getting into the skincare routine, we're, we're going to the gym. Now I'm gonna need you to let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full blown out makeup tutorial because I can really go there and be full on teacher. You know, this is more of a conversational talking webinar. What's a webinar? A, what, a web show or whatever I think of a webinar, I always think of like, a makeup webinar, I guess, like makeup by Mario, what else or something? I don't know, but let me know. This is for you, okay? It makes me happy if you're liking what I'm doing. And I was kind of trying to get to the bottom of that. It's like, oh, do I only want to make content that's serving others? Like, shouldn't I be liking it too? It's like, no, I'm going to like what's serving you best. You know, it's an amazing circle of life. It's this, ooh, I got to watch Circle of Life tonight. I'm in my animation era. Yes, that's happening. And there's definitely the conversation of, oh, why do we have to conform? Why do we have to, you know, put in so much work to look good? And I think that comes down to just the best things in life aren't easy. And it's weird. Our brains are hardwired to not wanting to do the things that we know that will benefit us. Did that make sense? We know going on a walk will help our mental state. We know going on a walk will we'll burn calories and we'll be active. But do we always want to get up and go on a walk? No. But I think the whole point of life is wanting to go on the walk because it benefits you. So that's definitely a crossover when it comes to spirituality. So it's very easy to check off a list. But if you're actually not immersing yourself in that thing, then there's no point. I used to, I, I'm guilty of this. I used to be, okay, went to the gym, went to this, but did I actually put in time and effort at the gym? When I, I went on a walk, well, was I actually, you know, in my creative vortex? What, did I have a clear mind? Was I meditating? We need to make sure we are actually executing our visions because we don't want to be the people of, you know, the manifestors of, oh, I want to be beautiful. Why am I not beautiful? I said it, like I said my daily affirmation, I'm beautiful, why am I not looking like that? It's like, no, because you need inspired action. 
So inspired action would be waking up, feeling good. You know, you're not setting the intent to go style your hair. But if it happens, that happens. For me, it's like, okay, I wanna be inspired to do my hair today. I'm gonna to feel good in the morning. I'm gonna go on my walk, I'm gonna get my coffee, my coffee, I'm gonna do whatever I want, play with my dolls. And now I'm gonna be feeling so good, I'm just naturally gonna be styling my hair. That's literally what happened to me yesterday. So I would advise, if you don't wanna do something, if something's feeling like work or you're dreading it, just forget about that activity in general and just have fun. Literally do what you wanna do because you'll be feeling good and hopefully from that, it will inspire you to do the thing you didn't wanna do, but now you wanna do. Yes, sugar's world language only. Now for today's look, I'm definitely leaning more towards the creative eccentric side of my makeup style. To be honest, I feel like going through Drag Race, I've kind of toned down my makeup. Not my fashion, but I mean, even my hair too. I felt like the Drag Race fans or the drag community, if you even want to call it that, was pressuring me to be something that I wasn't. And it's like, no, I'm going to be me and be unapologetic about it. So my inspo for my eye look today and also my fashion is very much my scene. So I'm going to be going circular. I'm not really going to be pulling out because the, especially the early Mycene dolls, they had more of a stoic, more stamped on expression. And I definitely want to go full on doll today. Really kind of go back to my OG sugar roots because I kind of have two different aesthetics that, you know, live in Sugar's world. I have my princess coquette baby doll romantic princess side. And then I also have my funky fun fashion doll side. And I'm kind of exploring that side more without that Y2K element because I feel like I have, you know, I'm Y2K out. You know, as an artist, once you kind of conquer all your hopes and dreams with a certain vibe, you know, you move on to your next era, basically. And, you know, it's just a natural thing. It's nothing like intentional. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to be different now from my original drag aesthetic. It's just, I'm getting inspired by new things, but the doll in me, that's the thing. I'm always... Oh, no, Miss Sugar is always giving you unapologetic dog. That's even kind of why I'm doing the coloring of like the purple and blue. Like everything is very matchy matchy because most people don't really do matchy matchy, especially when it comes to color. You're not really getting a monochrome look. You're not getting a two tone look. You know, it's going to be more neutrals and you know what people wear, just more muted down. Not so much of a color combo, if you will. But in Sugar's world, we we really embrace the color. I just love color. Did I say I like color? Now, Miss Therapist Sugar, Prophet Sugar, whatever you want to call me, let me know in the comments what you like better. I need to clock in and give you guys some tough love. I need to be real with you guys. I don't want to give you some BS of, well, you just need to love yourself and then you're going to be beautiful or fake it till you make it. When really that's the worst advice. You can't fake it till you make it because the first step to looking good and feeling good about yourself is self-acceptance. So we need to look in the mirror and accept ourselves for our flaws and also be strategic and be like, okay, how am I going to fix this? Because we live in a world where we don't need to have insecurities. We can problem solve and get to where we want to be in every aspect of our life. I think you need to understand that the way you look directly affects all aspects of your life, your job, your money, your friendships, your romantic relationships. And I know I said it earlier, but if you look good, you feel good. I mean, for me, I literally go on a walk every morning and that's directly correlated to me making more money and being better at business. Because let's face it, if you look good, more people are going to buy from you. So achieving aspirational beauty isn't just a vain, superficial thing. Like this is going to help you be a millionaire, a billionaire. I mean, look at the Kardashians. If they didn't look the way they did, would they be making that amount of money? Would they be that successful at business? No, and I, you can fight me, I don't care. Like, there's no other way around it. So I think the faster we accept that our appearance is really important and vital to how we live our lives, the faster we're gonna be happier. So let's work on ourselves, elevate, and start to enjoy life because it's not fun when you feel bad about yourself. I'm definitely going to touch on it in future videos, but this summer I suffered uh, with binge eating and it really, I mean, kind of my whole life, but it really hit a low point. And once I got like myself together, I was feeling so much better. I was able to start making videos again. And you know, my appearance and like me having low self-esteem was 
technically affecting my work, which is being able to show up on camera and feel confident. Here's some perspective for you. The days I felt the best about myself and when I was looking good outwardly, those are probably the best days of my life because I wasn't focusing on my appearance. I mean, think about yourself. If you have a pimple, if you're breaking out, did you have a fun day at school or at work? Probably not because the whole time you were worrying about, oh my God, are they looking at my pimple? Are they looking at the makeup I'm covering it with? I remember in middle school, I was deathly insecure because not only did I have a pizza face of acne, I was worried that people were like, oh my God, he's gay because he's wearing makeup. And that's so sad. And I was not present. I was sleeping during that part of my life because I was so scared people were going to call me ugly. Or, And it's so funny now because people are like, oh, wow, like you're a drag queen, you're beautiful. Da, da, da. It's like, no, this has been such a journey. And I personally feel like I've been able to achieve beauty. And, you know, it's a never ending journey. But I've been able to achieve this because I wasn't this. And I know what it feels like to be the ugly duckling. And, you know, I have empathy for people that are struggling with their looks. And that's why I have this channel. I want to be here to help you to give you actual tools to better yourself so you can be your most confident. So my homework for you on this episode of Sugar's World is to get real with yourself. We're getting real, girls. And you're going to write down a list of the people that you aspire to be when it comes to your looks. For me, I even forgot to mention my number one is dolls. That is aspirational beauty to me. I mean, literally my whole career and my whole drag journey is about looking like a life-size doll. But for me, they're perfection. They are crafted by an artist and they are otherworldly beauty. It's almost unreal to see such a cartoon perfect look and I love it. So that is what gets me inspired. But I want you to write down a list of people. Maybe it's your mom. It's the pretty girl in your high school from 10 years ago, uh, a Victoria's Secret model. Write them down and you'll really be able to put into perspective what you like personally and that will motivate you to eventually look like them and then in turn be your best self. So once you have your list down of all the aspirational beauties, I want you to start being objective and analyze what all of them have in common. For me, that was height. Everyone that I looked up to when it came to my beauty aspirations, they were all tall. So for me, that means wearing outfits that show off my legs. That's why, you know, me and Spice, we were wearing the eight inch heels because we wanted to be tall. That was something we were prioritizing. So you need to look at this list and be like, oh, they all have good skin. So what does a person with really good skin do? They are investing in their skincare. They're looking up products for their skin type and that's how they're gonna start. For me, I have two lists for guys and girls. So on the guy side, a lot of them are lean and toned and have healthy bodies. So for me, I couldn't be delusional. As much as I wanna sit on the couch all day, the people that I'm looking up to, they're going to the gym. They're living healthy lifestyles. So that's something I need to implement into my daily routine. The number one thing to achieving your dream appearance is patience. And I'm not saying tomorrow you have to go and start running a marathon, but no, little by little, implement things into your, your routine that will get you to your goals that these wow, people are doing. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing your contacts to the teal ones? Look how cool they're like circle lenses, but they're teal. Oh my God. Say hi. Wow. Wow, I just got laser. I'm, I'm crazy right now. Whoa, your quality is so cool. It's on cinematic mode, aren't you living? Whoa. Oh my I God. think this is Spice's first time on Sugar's World. Well, I kind of was in the last one. But right, 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 right. I just didn't want to be in it because I wanted it to be different than our normal videos. No, I know, right? I know. We live and then we come together and we're sick All right, bye, bitch. I'm just listening to my new song. If you want to achieve your dream looks, you need to start taking accountability. It's no one else's fault that you don't look good and that you don't have confidence and you're eating like crap. You need to look in the mirror and go, okay, I'm fixing this. I am going to start implementing good eating habits. Now, this is easier said than done, of course, especially when it comes to food and especially if you get the munchies like me. But something I do is I don't even have junk food or snacks that are really calorie dense in my house because I know me, I can help myself late at night, I'm going in for the midnight snack. So instead, now I just have healthy options. So I'm still going to go in for the snack, but it's not going to be something that's really caloric and result in my self-esteem plummeting the next day. It's just a never ending cycle of, oh, I'm going to eat and then you feel bad and then you rinse and repeat. It's not good. The biggest silent flex is walking into a room and looking fit. 
That just shows, oh, wow, this person prioritizes their health. They care about themselves. They have a really high self-esteem. I mean, even when me and Spice walked in on Drag Race, that was kind of the underlying thing, even though no one said it, but they were all kind of judging us because we were fit and we were healthy. And it reads, you know, it's great when you can walk into a room and you don't have to say, look at me, look at me, look how great I am. The key to looking like a superstar and achieving your dream looks is self-discipline. I always tell myself, if it was easy, everyone would do it and everyone would look like a superstar. That's why we look up to these people in Hollywood because it's hard. Anything you want can be achieved. It's all a mindset. So just start thinking, I am gorgeous. I am beautiful. I am so happy with my appearance. And then that will manifest. We have to remember beauty is a science. This is a math here. The important thing to realize is it's not really about the outward appearance that you're putting on your mood board that you're chasing after. It's really the energy that comes comes with looking outwardly beautiful. And you know, remember, beauty is an eye of the beholder. So what I deem as beautiful or what you deem as beautiful, it's going to be two completely different things, right? And that's the amazing thing. And really on the other end of being physically attractive is having such a light inside of yourself. I think a lot of us go, oh my God, I want to look like this person. So it's all personal. It's, but we don't realize what we really want is the energy that is coming from within them. It's that confidence. I feel like I spent a majority of my queer upbringing, you know, just trying to look good. So the attention wasn't on me. And I know that's probably confusing like wait what like you wanted to look good so you people want to pay attention to you but for me that was a thing I remember family parties I would go to in ninth grade and my mom's uncles would make fun of me for looking like a girl or eating like a girl because I was so skinny I was literally just sticking bones my safety net was going to the gym I was like oh my god if I have muscles then I won't be sticking out at these family parties and they won't be commenting on my looks and how I don't have a male physique if you will and then in turn they won't find out my big secret which is I'm gay so that was me in survival mode looking back it's kind of sad I wish I could tell my younger self like babes if you don't want to go to the gym you don't have to you don't need this societal pressure to look a certain way but honestly I'm grateful for the comments that my uncles made even though I still have a weird thing with eating around people because it was always those comments, right? Like on Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners. Let me know if y'all can relate, but they'd always be like, are you going to eat that? And really it was just, I was a picky little eater. And of course my taste buds expanded growing up. And now I wish I was more of a picky eater because I literally like everything. It's like, girl, like, can we chill out? It'd be really easy for me to hold resentment towards those people. But honestly, it got me to be the best version of myself. Uh, after a while, I learned, oh no, I like going to the gym. This helps me mentally, physically, emotionally. It was my own time to just, you know, focus on myself. And that really is the positive of going to the gym because it's your time to get mental clarity. It's your time to work things out. I mean, no one has ever regretted going to the gym. I mean, I've definitely regretted not going to the gym and feeling like a bloated mess. I'm definitely going to dive into this more in my binge eating video that's coming soon. But I'm going to be honest, I haven't gone to the gym in six months because my social anxiety has been skyrocketing. And it's sad because that's been holding me back from feeling good about myself. Yesterday was the first day I was finally back at the gym. And don't get me wrong, I've been doing exercise. I've been going on my walks, you know, that's been replacing that. But I want to get back to the place where I have a balance where I'm able to go into the gym and not get like social anxiety and get nervous. And you know what, it took two seconds of bravery. I remember seconds before going in, I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. There's gonna be people looking at me. And it's like, no, girl, you're being so dramatic. Stop. And I felt so good about myself after going I felt like on cloud nine because you literally get those endorphins it's an amazing natural dopamine hit so I encourage you to incorporate physical activity into your day a body in motion stays in motion what is that a helmet Newton's law I don't know <laughs> I'm so happy to have this sugar's world community with you because I feel like the longest time I was consuming content on YouTube growing up especially in high school and it was just so much content about, you know, put on your foundation, put on your eyeliner like this. That's how you're going to feel confident. And it's like, no, 
Of course, those things do help, yeah, but technically, if you're not taking care of your own mental health, then you're not gonna look good because you can, you know, put lipstick on a pig, but it's still gonna be a pig because of the demeanor. I think that's what you're gonna come to learn about me as I get more of my message out there through these videos is that it really is all about your inner beauty. You could see the most beautiful person out in the wild, out at the air want, out at the Trader Joe's, but the second they open up their mouth and you realize their morals and values, and you're like, oh wait, they're actually really superficial. This person isn't beautiful to me. And sometimes it's on a subconscious level, you don't even realize. You're like, wait, I'm supposed to find this person beautiful. You know, in high school, when everyone's like obsessing over someone, and you're like, mm, my intuition is telling me no, they're an ugly person. And you have to listen to those things because it reads, if you are not beautiful on the inside, Side and you haven't done the self work, then you're not going to be deemed beautiful on the outside. Let's just be real. I think just living in LA for almost two years now has really taught me this lesson. I have been in the rooms of the most gorgeous Instagram models and uh, part, it, it's cringy to even say, but that's why I don't even involve myself in nightlife anymore. And I know that's kind of weird for like a drag queen, like what, you're not really involved in nightlife. But I learned that it's draining because you're around these people that have made themselves up to be just so gorgeous. And you know, there is no denying that. And you know, they get all the surgeries and it's like, wow, they are a knockout but their energy is just off because they forgot the thing that is actually going to connect them to people which is their energy and their inner light you can get all these surgeries but if you don't fix those insecurities on the inside then it's almost kind of pointless right I like to call it the Bella Hadid syndrome. She's mentioned it briefly, but I feel like just watching her interviews, I'm able to read her aura. I'm really good at that. I love observing people and people would probably find that weird, but I don't know. I really like human behavior and the psychology of it all. But you can tell she hasn't really worked out all of those issues that she's felt as being the ugly duckling growing up. You know, compared to Gigi, she would always say she was the naturally gorgeous one and I was kind of the one in the corner that my mom didn't pay attention to. Too. And, you know, that's a whole nother thing with the Yolanda Hadid of it all. And those poor girls have been through it. I, I just feel it. But, you know, she still doesn't feel beautiful, even though, you know, she's gotten everything done to be the most gorgeous woman in the world. And that breaks my heart because you can tell she does have such a light. Why are we talking about Bella Hadid? No, she's a great example. And uh, oh my God, I love having this longer form content because I feel like my whole life I've kind of been silenced. And it's like, no girl, like you can't talk, you can't speak up and you know, go on your tangents. So thank you for being here with me on these tangents and many more to come. Now, in an ideal world, I wanted this whole video to be a talk through. I didn't want this to be a voiceover. Let me know what you like better. If you like me talking, if you like the voiceover. Personally, for me, I find it really satisfying to just watch the makeup process. And I really wouldn't be able to show you guys how I do it if I was talking through everything. I'm a visual learner. I think most of us are. So hopefully just by watching this video, you're able to pick up on some makeup tips. But let me know if you want full blown teacher. And for me, just do a video talking about my favorite products and the actual techniques of it all. Me and Spice always laugh because she would always say she was the creative one when it came to makeup and I was the analytical one. And I always kind of listened to her when it came to that. But no, that isn't true. I'm actually a very creative person. It's just I love finding out the scientific reasons behind everything and how everything's applied. I've been able to kind of let go of those blocks because when you're always kind of told something about yourself, you almost start to believe it. Like, oh no, you're just uh, the technical one. But no, I really enjoy just the makeup application. I think that started from me having really bad acne in high school and I was just obsessed with beauty YouTube. And, you know, I felt like I couldn't wear makeup. I wasn't allowed to because my sister was and she bar barely even wore makeup or my mom barely did and you know it's no shade to them they just weren't the glamour girls right and I think it's something about wanting something you can't have so I think because makeup and beauty was something that technically wasn't for people like me if you will I wanted it more and I think that's why I've studied it even when it comes to my drag female illusion is very important to me I know drag means something different to everyone 
but you know, I haven't really been able to relate to looking like a decorative couch. I feel like drag has really turned into that. Like who can have the most intricate, most expensive outfit? And I've really been enjoying just getting back to my roots of styling looks and making things more homemade, if you will, and even doing my own hair because it's just way more satisfying when you do it yourself. Here I'm doing my boob contour. My drag daughter, Miss Secret, has kind of shown me the ropes of this. And I'm still learning. For me, it was a little bit too high, but you kind of just have to do it. I remember being so scared. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to ruin my drag look if my boot contour is fucked. And you know, looking back, I'm like, mm, I shouldn't even be saying this because now you're just going to be looking at the boot contour. No, it actually is really good. I'm being hard on myself, but you just have to do it scared and unprepared. It's just like this YouTube channel. You're only going to be able to learn from your mistakes, okay? Okay, we just got the body on. I haven't put on the dress yet. It's always a gamble. I literally got this dress off Depop, so you never know. How it's gonna course in her on up. You got the little white Victoria's Secret bra. Yes. Oh my god, you're giving a titty illusion with that contour. I know she I do my titty contour now. Wait, back up, girl. She's Wait, giving on Camarie. Get into the waist. What waist? Oh wait, the wait, the, uh, the, there's little wings behind you. We turn around and it looks like you have fairy wings. Wait. Really? Give the illusion, yeah. D D D. Sugar's world. Okay, so last steps, we got the wig on standby, boop, boop, boop. I decided I'm not going to do all the flowers because it was just looking so arts and crafts with it placed in. And it would have been fine if they were real flowers and also if the flowers were actually all the same because it was just looking like Amazon bundle, no ma'am. Putting on the wig for me as a final step is always the most fun because it really brings the look together. I'm always so anal about everything being laid properly. I mean, y'all literally saw in the first episode of Drag Race, I was clocked by Miss Mistress for my wig not being glued down. And of course, you know, they really tried to zoom in and get me, girl, and I can own it because, you know, I, I look back and like, girl, I was in my baby drag queen era. Like, I wasn't able to get it fully laid down but i'm happy for that because now i'm like oh no my hair is always going to be laid and slayed you're never going to be catching miss sugar slipping so thank you mistress because you only made me more sickening Mwah. okay she's coming together final touches we are putting on some spirit gum on the earrings miss spice is gonna go help me take some pics it's kind of sad because i was supposed to take photos at sunset and golden hour and it is nighttime of course, you know, in Sugar's world, we're always running late, but I, you know, I love to say a princess is never late. Everyone else is simply early. Oh, okay, as that falls. Okay, trying this again. See, bending over when you're corseted is kind of, it's hell on earth sometimes, I will say. The things we do to give drag perfection and aspirational beauty, you know, the discomfort, it's, it's about to happen, but. Oh my gosh, see, I can't leave a house without an earring. Last week I had a performance and I didn't have an earring and honestly the whole look was canceled for me because there's something so feminizing. See, it just brings it down and it brings your attention to the face and a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shine. Oh my, oh, okay, we're gonna, we have to redo this. So here is the finished look. I feel like baby sugar, but revamped and re-upped and reshaken. Remixed and reimagined. Yes, with all of my new drag knowledge because that's the learning lesson here. Look back at your old looks fondly. Don't just like roast yourself to death. There's probably some gems you were doing that maybe can be revisited and reworked you know, with some more hair, more bundles. This is actually reminding me of a look I did for my first performance back in Brooklyn in Williamsburg. It was a shit show, but I had the mint. But I remember thinking I was like everything I was like giving that girl. But then I looked back at the footage a few weeks ago and I said, where are the buck dolls? Where was she? All the girls are about, you know, how many inches. You thought you were that girl, that girl was missing. The girl was missing. Everyone's like, oh, is it giving 40 inches? I said, no, how many bundles? Is it giving six bundles? Because that was giving one. And you know, some of us have a broader backs that we need to cover. See, that's why I love a stack. So Miss Spice was getting on me um, and being like, girl, like we need sugar in the stack wig. And you know- So when you get to the point, my Uber's here. Well, okay. I like this better because it's not an Ariana boot. It's a little bit more Lana Del Rey. That's a baddie boot. Right. Um, shout out Jaden. He's getting me into, okay. Do we like this light better here? Okay, right. get into this. Yeah, literally, I was just running around, insert photos here, Hollywood, uh, the queen of the suburbs in Long Island now. Queen I got to it. wrap it up, sweetie. But yeah, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get like hate crimes out here because I was, I'm in the scoochie dress. I'm scooching it down. Marley, uh, they're going to the Kim Petras concert. Marley, say hi. Hi. 
Yeah, so um, I was like, Oh, so no, the cars are here. We have to go.